And so uh, we always begin the teaching. We always begin everything that we do, hopefully with uh, adjusting our motivation. So please think that uh, the purpose of my life is to benefit all sinning beings in order to benefit sinning beings in the best way, in the most effective way. I must first achieve the state of enlightenment, uh, characterized by the complete abandonment of all faults of the mind and the complete development of all good qualities. And then and only then will I have the skills, ability, knowledge, power to guide sinning beings in the most effective way from the oceans of samsaric suffering to the state of enlightenment. And therefore, in order to achieve enlightenment, I need to learn about all the various practices that lead to enlightenment. I need to put them into practice. And therefore, I'm going to listen to this Dharma teaching here this afternoon slash evening. Okay. So, um, Canon. Could you do me a favor? Could you bring me the the flyer from this session? So there's a flyer and my picture's on it. And it's it's like right in front of me. So like when I look out in the audience, <laughs> I see my picture. And it makes me very self-conscious. Thank you very much. But but secondly, there's a dual purpose for this. Second is I want to read what we're going to cover today so that I make sure we do that so we're not accused of false advertising, right? Okay. So Namgyal, some of you know Namgyal? Okay. I've known Namgyal for a very long time. Yes, how many years? 10 years, I think. Uh, eight years, yeah, 2016. Both he and his sister came, right? Your sister was in the course too? Both came to an intro to Buddhism course in uh, Dharamsala, India. And now, look at him. Were you teaching that course? Yeah, I was teaching that course. So now when you teach an intro course and then someone then becomes ordained, you get like... Yeah, thousand extra good karma points or something. It, it's like it's like investing in the in a startup, like an angel investor. Then when they go comp, they go public. Then it's like. Anyway, so thank you, Namgyal, for coming, and all your sincere practice. <clears throat> but I was gonna say. He's then come to many teachings of mine, and he's always in like samadhi when I'm teaching. And you, are, I've already done a few jokes, and I'm giving like my best material. Many people are laughing. Namgyal is like in super samadhi. So for me, <laughs> I'm going to try when he's in samadhi, I'm going to try to make him break a smile. See? <laughs> I'm joking, I'm joking. <clears throat> Good author but, shared the prayer. What's that? Sorry. What's that? I have a PDF for the prayer too, if you like. The, um, the swift return prayer? Uh, just the refuge. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that. Just, yeah, don't worry. <clears throat> Yeah. But first, this is something too with getting old. I'm normally nearsighted, but then when I read this, my glasses is for seeing far. And instead of getting the, that, that would make me feel too old. So instead I just take them off. 
<laughs> so here it says, as we approach the anniversary of Kebje Lama Zoparimbashe, our revered spiritual teacher who has recently shown the aspect of passing away, we gather to honor his memory and pray for his swift return. Venerable Namjoon will guide us in understanding the profound significance of recalling the kindness of our spiritual teacher and will lead chanting the names of Manjushri for Lama Zoparimbashe's swift return. Please join us uh, for this heartfelt teaching as we learn how to properly honor and cherish the Guru's blessings. Yeah, we can do that. <clears throat> so, uh, first, since since Bailey reminded me that we have these uh, the refuge prayer. Why don't we do that? It's also something we do at the beginning of teachings. Would you like um, a concise version or a full version? Concise. Oh. <clears throat> Yeah. So this teaching or sorry, this prayer is normally recited at the beginning of the teaching and um, it's important that any kind of formal practices that we do we have some appreciation as to why we're doing it. Otherwise, it's just a kind of like a blind, empty ritual. So in general, this this refuge in, in taking bodhicitta, they say, right, that the refuge... Okay, so this this one stanza, four lines, first two lines, uh, going for refuge, then prevents us from following a wrong path, okay? So <clears throat> here, path, uh, path to what? Liberation and enlightenment. So as Chandakirti says in the 70 stanzas on refuge, then the three jewels of refuge, uh, the three jewels is the refuge for those desiring liberation. So liberation from what? Liberation from samsara, the cycle of uncontrolled rebirth, due to our karma and afflictions. In order to uh, be liberated from samsara, we have to cut the root of samsara, which is the ignorant mind that grasps onto a distorted view of reality. And the, the direct antidote to that is the wisdom realizing the ultimate nature of reality or emptiness, shunyata. And since it's uh, only the, the Buddha that have, uh, have taught that uh, view of reality, then they're the befitting uh, source of refuge for those desiring liberation. Okay. Now, we said liberation is of uh, two kinds, mere liberation from samsara and the full, liber uh, full enlightenment of a Buddha. So, this uh, second two lines are uh, is the generation of bodhicitta or the altruistic wish to achieve enlightenment for the benefit of all sinning beings. So there we say, you know, by the merits I create through listening to the Dharma, may I become a Buddha to benefit all sinning beings. Right? So here we're already including uh, from the beginning our, our aspiration and motivating our efforts to achieve uh, enlightenment or become a Buddha in order to benefit all sinning beings. Okay? So with that, we can recite three times together. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, Dharma, and the Supreme Assembly by the merits I create through listening to the Dharma. May I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sinning beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, Dharma, and Supreme Assembly by the merits I create through listening to the Dharma. May I become a Buddha in order to benefit all sinning beings. I go for refuge until I'm enlightened to the Buddha, Dharma, and Supreme Assembly by the merits I create 
through listening to the Dharma, man become a Buddha in order to benefit all sentient beings. The author that I can show up my mm. Oh. Mm. Aji Perky Jul Ching Meto Tamre Rabling Ji. Thank you. <clears throat> so, out of curiosity, how many of you had the good fortune to uh, meet with or at least receive teachings from Lama Zopar Rinpoche directly? Great. That's good. So as as you know, I've been staying with uh, with Nidhi, who has a a, a six year old, who we we say is very high energy. He came yet yeah, last night to the puja. So, <laughs> high energy means you know normally, uh, you know, I'm not living with children. So wake up in the morning, do my practice, you know, all this. But uh, those of you who spent time with young children, they can, uh, even though they're high energy, they demand a lot of energy. <clears throat> so anyway, uh, can I admit something? Is in the car right over here. I usually I, I prepare quite diligently for a teaching but then it was just in the car right over here I say to Namgyal I'm like hey you know what today was so busy ah uh, I have to give a talk and <laughs> we were driving to the center now I'm gonna give my talk I'm gonna talk about this and I said I'm just gonna go over the entire guru devotion section of Lam Rim in an hour and 15 minutes I can do it Namgyal, my, my, uh, says, you know what? He says, he's, he's very good. He's very good. He says, 
far be it from me to 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 say anything, give you any advice. But other teachers, Yang Siram She, Geshe Zopa, Tenzin Zopa, when they when they give teachings, they just kind of what was the word? Maybe teach from the heart. And don't don't worry so much about the traditional outlines. Of course, in a study program, it's different. You have to go through. But and he said, maybe that will be more beneficial. Was that what you said? Yes. So I said, okay, we can do that too. So here is reversing. If it goes well, then Namgyal will get like the 10% the bonus. If it doesn't go well, then the fault is all mine. Okay. Ah, it's okay. No, I'm, I'm, I'm just being, I'm just being uh, silly. Now, why I had thought to do the whole lemurin? Because for me. Right. And and now, you know, I've studied 17 years in the Geshe program and our the way we do things. It's like whenever we have some mm, teaching, the Tibetans are very big in the outlines. And how we normally start off a debate, and then we'll give a quotation from the text we're studying. Right. And then the our opponent. We just give a few lines, a few words, and they have to say in the whole text which of the outlines it's from. Hmm. Right? Not easy. And then from that outline, you'll then say, okay, the, the outlines on that level, how many are there? Right? And then those three or four which outline did those come from? And then what are its partner? And like, you know, you go back up to the beginning. This is a good way to gain familiarity with the text. And so my normal style is, okay, when we're talking about uh, kindness of the guru, remembering the kindness of the guru, those of you who study Lamrim, what outline does that come from? Well, yeah, Guru Devotion, but the direct one. There is remembering the kindness of the Guru itself. Remembering the kindness of the Guru. That is one outline. And what goes along with it? Yeah. So anyway, this whole thing, I was going to weave it all together. But instead... We can speak from the heart. So, you know, the food offering prayer that we normally do, right? Lama Sangye, Lama Che, Dejin Lama Gendunte, Kungi Jebo Lama Te, Nama Nala Che Babu. You know that one, right? Lama is Guru. Sangye is Buddha. Lama, Guru, Che. Deshin, like that. Gendun is Sangha, right? So Lama, Sangye, Lama, Che, Deshin, Lama, Gendun, Te. Now they translate as the Guru is the Buddha. The Guru is the Dharma. The Guru is the Sangha also. Or like in that way, right? Or like that, the Guru is the Sangha. Kungi Jepo, Kun is all. Jepo, Jepo really means follow after, right? So, you know, sometimes follow after means comes from. So then in a more poetic way, they, they say the guru is the creator of all and then in parentheses happiness, right? So everything follows after the guru in a more kind of uh, literal way. But really, it means everything good 
follows after the guru. And therefore, Lama Namla Chababu, to all gurus I make this offering, right? So, hmm. very tasty actually that 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 stanza comes from one of the the root tantras i forget which one but uh mm. actually th this this one stanza is <laughs> it, is interesting because even on like the first day of a of a um uh, intro to Buddhism course, they'll talk about okay the food offering prayer, and they'll have it into Shita, like on little laminated uh, cards in the lunchroom. Yeah, you've seen them. But in that one, one stanza, is really, 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 really profound. And it's really profound. Okay, press pause there. I, I quoted a, a similar thing last night when we did the Guru Puja, but there's a story. There's a story that Lama Zoparimbisha was very fond of, of saying. So all of you, uh, I hope, have heard of uh, Marpa. Marpa. Marpa Lotsawa. Uh, who's the, the guru of Milarepa. So Marpa, in turn, was a disciple of Naropa. Naropa. So Urus in, in, in Boulder, Colorado, there's Naropa Institute. So Naropa, great Indian uh, yogi, Marpa, Tibetan, Milarepa, Tibetan. So Marpa went to Tibet. I'm oh, sorry, <laughs> went to India to receive teachings from Naropa. And... Marpa was a layperson, a farmer, had a wife, had children, but anyway, was a great practitioner, trained with Naropa, and kind of uh, before he went back to Tibet, Naropa, his guru, manifested the uh, mandala, so not the mandala that you offer at the beginning of teachings, but mandala in this context means the kind of celestial realm of uh, Hivadra, a, a certain Buddha. Okay. So then Naropa says to, to Marpa, <clears throat> I'm paraphrasing, who or, you know, who are you going to prostrate to? Your guru or the Hevajra Mandala? So the Hevajra Mandala has Hevajra, the Buddha, and all the retinue deities, all this. So uh, Marpa says, or he's thinking, says, hmm. well, I see my guru all the time. But, hey, the Hevajra Mandala, that I've never seen before. This is a bit special. I'm going to prostrate to the mandala. What do you think? Door, door number one, door number two. So, he does that. 
the mandala absorbs into Mar um, Naropa's heart. And I think he says, this is what I said last night in, in the, the, the root tantra, without the guru, the word Buddha does not even exist. You understand? So, sorry. Um, you see, everything follows after the guru. Everything comes after the guru. So, what does that mean? We talked about this. We touched on this last night. But... You know, the fact, <laughs> this is what you have to understand. Uh, the fact that you're a human, how did that happen? The fact that you have enough um, material resources to eat lunch today, how did that happen? The fact that you can take two hours out of your schedule and you're not having bombs drop all over you, you're not having uh, you know, whatever kind of suffering, other animals attacking you, okay? How did all this happen? Well, you all have. You all have the precious human rebirth. Yeah. How'd that happen? So, yes, now, now, you know. Casey, right? Yes. Good. I'm 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 giving a commentary on Kungi Jepo Lamate. And so, of course, the right answer is gonna be. Kindness of the guru. <laughs> Remembering the kindness of the guru. So yes, it's a good, good guess, good answer. But let's be a little bit more clear on that. The, pro the proximate cause was virtue, right? To get a good rebirth in general, we need to practice pure morality. Yes. In order to get, uh, you know, even even enough merit to see water as water. You understand? A preta, <laughs> it appears as pus, blood, cannot even drink. So the fact that we can see water as water means we practice pure morality in the past. Okay. How did all this happen? Well, in a past life, we had the guru say, Hey, why don't you uh, abstain from the ten non virtues? Why don't you practice generosity, and gave us some teaching, with at least whatever kind of persuasive force that we then thought, okay, that's a good idea. I'm going to put that in practice. From that now, now we're enjoying the benefits. Okay. Mm. <clears throat> so then of course actually in the in the teachings uh Majimik Avatara many teachings you'll see um you know even in the six perfections we see Generosity comes first. It's easiest to practice, so they say, right? More, uh, yeah. But 
even in uh Mind Yumi Avatara, it says that uh, you know, through getting people accustomed to generosity, they will gain wealth, right? And then you'll see. <laughs> a little bit joking. But it's actually true. When you go to the 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 teachings with His Holiness the Dalai Lama these days in India, right? As a big stage, you know, 30,000 people come, good. But then there's a stage with the VIPs, okay? The VIPs have, of course, high lamas, tulkus, abbots, so forth. And then, Shandi, correct me if I'm wrong. Some like for one day of the teaching, you know, then some chief minister of uh, whatever Indian state comes, this actor, you know, Richard Gere, he's he's on stage, you know, all these people. So then, you're having the 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 wealth. You at least have to have the the leisure time to go and uh, take off and and travel and and receive teachings like this. Hmm. So, in any case. In the past life, you listen to teachings, you put them into practice, and now you experience the fruit of that in this life. You know, as they say, even in the, the Pali canon, I first saw this quotation in, uh, in a, a, a temple outside of Chiang Mai. W where's your family from, babe? Were you born in Thailand? Where? Bangkok. Uh So, uh, Wat Rampung, outside of Chiang Mai, big Vipassana center there. Anyway, there's this quotation I think many of you have heard. If you want to know where you were in your past life, look to what you're doing now. If you want to know where you'll be in your future life, look to what you're doing now. You understand? Hmm. So, <clears throat> before I saw that quote, right, you hear about, um, oh, this Lama was, uh, you know, the incarnation of so-and-so. You hear about past life regression. You hear about people remembering their past lives, what, all this stuff, right? And so when I was a very beginner, and I was like, oh, that'd be kind of interesting. There's there's someone in Bailakupi uh, where Seta is uh, in Karnataka, South India. She used to be able to, she had clairvoyance. She used to be able to like do this divination practice in a mirror. So kind of in a mirror, she could see where you were in your past life. And many people would go to see her. And I, I was interested at some point. And, and doing all that too. And then, well, the more I thought about that quote, I thought, nah, doesn't matter. Well, not really, right? The point is, I'm not enlightened now, right? I'm not enlightened now, so I still have to train on the path until I'm enlightened. So it doesn't matter if I was born as a, uh, you know, Tibetan monk in my last life. It doesn't matter if I was born as uh, whatever. The 12th Dalai Lama's cat in, in Tibet or I don't know, a dog roaming the, the streets of ancient India or a hell being for the past eon, right? It doesn't matter. I'm still here. We gotta practice. 
Okay. Then, so many people, I mean, it's good. We, we have to think about where we're going to be in our, our, our next life. It's good. I mean, this is the, the, the starting point of Dharma, right? To care about your, your future lives more than this life. Yes. But Lama Zonkapa <laughs> in one of my favorite uh, uh, little sections in Lamrim Chenmo so you know how, what a consummate scholar Lama Sankaba was. And the whole Lamrim Chenmo, it's, it's very scholarly quotations here and there, citing Indian sources, sutras, very well put together. But a few times, he'll, he'll kind of, as we say, uh, shoot from the hip. shoot from the hip, sort of uh, talk candidly, okay? And so, right? If you wonder where you're going to be in your next life, look to what you're doing now, okay? So, he kind of admonishes uh, the Tibetans, okay? So, Normally, in the Tibetan tradition, in, in the Chinese tradition, right? It even happens till today. New Year, right? Lunar New Year comes out, right? Oh, yeah. Losar, big party. But along with partying, you will consult your astrologer, right? And you'll ask, what's in store for me in the next year? Okay? And so I... I think this this hit me because I was starting to do this too. I, I I know someone, I think some of you on the Zoom know him too. A friend of ours. I'm not gonna mention names. He lives in Bangkok, actually. But he's a uh uh astrologer and a feng shui master. And uh he's a good friend of mine. And so around this time I was getting to it too, right? Okay, yeah, this year is coming out. Can you check, you know, what should I do? And sometimes they'll say, oh, you know, this year, right, you got to make sure, uh, you know, your, your bed is pointed in this direction, you know? When you study, you should face this direction, right? You know, So Lama Tsongkhapa in the Lamrim Chenmo, he admonishes, he scolds the Tibetans saying that, um, you know, when it's New Year's and our astrologer says, hey, move your door here, <laughs> sleep that direction. We're very, very interested and we follow that advice to the letter. Now, what will happen if we don't? Okay, we might get sick. We might have, you know, less profits in our business, whatever. But when it comes to the Buddha who said, you know, do not commit a single negative action accumulate a host of virtue, right? Thirdly, to the one's own mind, this is the teaching of the Buddha. So those first two, abandon non-virtue, accomplish virtue for the benefit of our future lives, right? This is going to determine where we're reborn. Then, Lama Sankaba says, we're very uh, lax with keeping that advice and we're always making excuses. I know the Buddha says... 
um, don't kill. But this tick I found on my dog, if I don't kill the tick, it's going to jump over to another animal and then eventually to a human. They're going to get sick, so I got to kill it, right? We make many uh, exceptions to the Buddha, but our astrologer, it's like, okay, now I got to paint this wall dark blue or whatever it is. So, if you wonder where you're going to be reborn in your next life, look to what you're doing now. Very, 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 very. Profound. So then you see this is my opinion. <laughs> but I think I'm right. <laughs> I think I'm, I think I'm very right, but it's still my opinion. In this degenerate age, yeah, the Kali Yug. You know, the degenerate age. The fact that we all have met the Dalai Lama, have met Lama Zopa Rinpoche, wow. We, <laughs> we practice so well in our past life. Un unbelievably well with perfect gurus and we follow their instructions very well. Otherwise, you see the proliferation of misleading gurus out there. You read about all these various scandals out there. which is really sad because you see people might be very sincere. They might be very sincere in wanting to do something positive with their lives. They might be sincere in wanting to learn, you know, Dharma. They might even have this thought that uh, I want to Im improve my own mind so I can be of benefit to others. But you see, I mean, Angulimala, right? The in the Buddhist time, wanted liberation, was sincere in his aspiration for liberation. Got kind of uh, caught up with a guru who is jealous of his own student. Says to him. Yeah, you want liberation? Kill a thousand people. So the guru, wanting to cause the downfall of his own student because he was afraid of the student surpassing him, tells him to undertake this. You know the story, right? So then, Angulimala goes out, kills 999, the thousandth would be the Buddha. Anyway, the Buddha is able to subdue, but you see how it is. You see how it is. Hmm? And I tell you, probably things are going to get worse. <laughs> right? As it says in the text, right? This degenerate age, it's, it, it, it's increasing. It's like mm, the sun is setting on the teachings of Buddha. 
it's going to be harder and harder to find qualified masters. And yet, we've done it. So... Now, you see, we talk about remembering the kindness of the guru, right? Uh, praying for the guru's swift return. It's not for the guru. The guru doesn't need our prayers. The guru doesn't need us to remember him or her. But for us, since, you know, probably we're not going to attain enlightenment in this life. Sorry to burst your bubble. So since that's the case, we need to a good, good rebirth in our next life. Yes, what is that? Um, you know, okay, 18, 18 qualities of the person in rebirth. Okay, sure, but in short, you know, be able to, you know, as it says, "Kewa kundu yanda lama dang jelme yanda," right? Jelme. Kewa kundu yanda lama dang jel me. So kund, again, all. So kewa is birth. Kewa kundu yandak lama. Lama, we know guru. Yandak is pure. Jel me, no separation. Ah. So we pray. And all my lives never separated from perfect gurus. But that's not all. That's not all. Because remember, 12th Dalai Lama's cat. You know, not separated from a perfect guru. But uh, how do they translate it? Uh, man, man joy the magnificent dharma. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, man enjoy the magnificent dharma. Enjoying the magnificent dharma means being in a precious human rebirth with the intelligence to hear, understand, put into practice the, the Guru's instructions. Yeah? Sadang Lam gi yuntin rab zok te. So Sadang Lam is the grounds and paths, right? Yuntin qualities. Zok is to complete. By completing all the qualities of the grounds and paths, those are all the levels of the Bodhisattvas. Dorje Changi Gopang Nyur Top Show. Dorje Chang Vajadara. Gopang is the state. Nyur, quick. Top, attain. Shok is uh, may, may attain. May quickly attain the state of Vajadara. <clears throat> Means the state of enlightenment. Very nice prayer. You guys pray like that? Tenzin Zopa, Geshe Tenzin Zopa was just here a few weeks ago. Right? Did you come? I know him somewhat. They made that movie, Unmistaken Child. We're talking about reincarnations, right? Reincarnations of lamas. Did you see that? So that movie, that film, documentary, whatever you want to say, it came out many years ago, before I knew Geshe Tenzin Zopa very well. And one thing that, that I still remember and struck me in that movie Several times, you know, so he's looking for the reincarnation of his guru. And many times, uh, 
he'll be at some place, you know, he's, he's on the search. And many, many times in the movie, you see him make that very prayer. Okay. That's very interesting to me. I don't know. This is, this is okay. This is some little thought for you. If you have a notebook, <clears throat> of course, you write notes you're in the lecture. Uh, fine. <clears throat> but in kind of unexpected things where people, teachers, whoever, <clears throat> they're emphasizing something that you're like, why are they emphasizing this? Maybe you don't even know. But for me, I'm like, wow, he's saying that prayer a lot. A lot. You can think, oh, why? Why why was he saying that so much? Or, you know, when you go back and listen to Lama Zobar Rinpoche's teachings, sometimes it can be like this, right? You think of teachings on something, and then it tells a story, lasted 35 minutes. And you think later, why did he tell that story? It's not a mistake. It's not just <laughs> nothing better to do. Right? You think. Maybe you have to think a while. Or think a little bit and then don't think about it for a month. And the next month you think about it more. But sometimes you might get that, ah, I... I I understand a little bit what maybe they were getting at. So anyway, you know, Lama Zorba was very fond of, you know, the dedication at the end of the teaching, you know, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, Right? That's good. But I remember Chudan Rinpoche, Kebji Chudan Rinpoche, he once said, right, in essence, there's the three main dedications, right? Dedicating, right? It's like we do. Gavadi Nududa, oh sorry, uh, due to this man, I quickly attain the state of a Guru Buddha, such that I may lead all sentient beings to that enlightened state. Okay, fine, great. But also for the long lives of the spiritual friends, and then for the flourishing of the Dharma. And I remember Chen Rinpoche saying, you know what? Actually, of those three main ones, you only really have to do one because. Like we said, if we pray to be enlightened for the benefit of all sentient beings, how are we going to get enlightened? By practicing Dharma. How are we going to practice Dharma? Well, the Dharma has to flourish and our, we need access to gurus who are teaching us. Okay. So the other two are, are there. Or we say, long lives of the spiritual friends. Well, if the long lives of the spiritual friends are here, right? If, if our spiritual friends are here with long lives, what are they going to do? They're going to teach Dharma. So the Dharma is going to flourish. Right? And then we're going to get enlightened. Or if we pray for the Dharma to flourish, how is the Dharma going to flourish without the gurus? And if that happens, like this, right? Hmm. But then, you see, this one with the Kewa Kundu Yandalam, in all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent Dharma by completing all the qualities of sage and path, may I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. That's like all, all those three dedications in one, right? And it's a little bit nice because it's not just, uh, you know, um, this life or all my lives until I'm enlightened, may I never be separated from perfect gurus. Enjoying the magnificent dharma means I'm having the precious human rebirth, which, by the way, needs the dharma to be flourishing in that place, right? 
as you know, from the eight, 18 qualities, it has to be in a, a land where the, the, the Buddha uh, t Dharma exists. And then, right, so when we talk about flourishing of Dharma, we're not talking about, oh, yeah, well, this place, oh, has <laughs> 10 bookshelves filled with books. The Dharma is flourishing. But what it means, right? Even in the the uh, teachings on precious human rebirth, it means that the Dharma is flourishing in a place where there's people who directly realize emptiness. Right? That's the Arya Sangha. Arya Sangha. So, by completing all the qualities of stage and paths, that means... If you, if you become an Arya Bodhisattva, then wherever you go, <laughs> the Dharma is flourishing there. You see? So, good. Not just in general, I want the Dharma to flourish in the world, but as as Lama Zorba is so fond of praying, right? Remember? You know, you're always saying, by myself alone, right? So you taking the personal responsibility to make the Dharma flourish. How am I going to make it? I'm going to become an Arya Bodhisattva in this life. What? Yeah. Good. Good plan? I think so. So then... In the Lam Rim, the traditional way to remember the Guru's kindness is you think of all the teachings you've received, of all the you know initiations you've received, of all the vows you've attained, you know, and maybe this is for you only, Namgyal, but. Uh, Pavonkar Rinpoche in Liberation of the Palm of Your Hand says he's talking to a group of monks at Seda in the about a hundred years ago. But he says, you know, the fact that we're able to ordain and, you know, live in the monastery with relatively few concerns and, you know, basically set up our lives so we can practice well is from the kindness of our abbot who gave us ordination. The fact that this center, Ocean of Compassion center, that the fact that this center exists, the fact that uh, Chukra Samling in Bangalore exists, Maitripa College in Portland, Oregon exists, Tushita uh, Dharmasala exists, Kopan Monastery in Kathmandu exists wherever you have received teachings, right? That's from the kindness of your gurus too. So then I remember one teaching uh, that Rinpoche gave about the importance of the Dharma center, yeah? And he said something just very simple. <laughs> but he put it in a, in a uh, how you say? Well, he put it like this. If someone comes...
if someone comes to a the Dharma teaching one day, off even off the street, they come in, they sit down, and and whatever person's up here could be like me, no realization per se, but they hear maybe a teaching on the ten non virtues, and they have this thought that hey, you know what? That monk was talking about not non killing, non killing of the tick. So you know what? Next time I find a tick on my dog, you know what? I'm not gonna kill that tick. Okay. Okay. That that's all they get. They come to the teaching. That's that's all they get, all they do. The next time they see a tick, they refrain from killing one tick one time. Okay. Mm. Yeah. Okay, so to give a comparison, give a comparison. <clears throat> Right? We have to compare. If they didn't come, means if the center wasn't here and they didn't come in, and therefore they went ahead and killed that tick. So from that one negative karma of killing one insect. Wait a minute, Namjong, it's just one insect. Come on. No, no, no. We know from we know from Lamarin teaching karma doubles in its potency. So within two weeks, it has become what, like 140,000 doubled or whatever, right? Times more, which is the equivalent of killing a human being. So then another two weeks, it's the equivalent of killing 140,000 human beings. So it becomes a very heavy karma, a very heavy karma. So anyway. Let's let's put that aside. Shantideva saying that, you know, talking about how difficult it is once we're reborn in the lower realms and one negative karma can project us into lower realms, then <clears throat> in the lower realm, it's so difficult to practice. So difficult to practice that then Shantideva says, once I'm reborn there, I will not even hear the, 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 the words happy rebirth for countless eons or billions of years. You understand? Okay. So if the center didn't exist, means if our gurus weren't there and, and, and helped to inspire and establish these centers, and this one person didn't get that teaching that then had them refrain from killing one time, that's what they would have experienced. So <laughs> the fact that that person doesn't experience that it it made all of the hard work worthwhile. Do you understand? If it happens to one person. Now, of course. We're also giving teachings on bodhicitta. We're also giving teachings on emptiness. We're doing these other things. Great. Even better. You understand? I mean, unbelievably better to hear one teaching on emptiness so much more purification to to even have a thought. Oh, bodhicitta. Hmm. And <laughs> just kind of be be a little bit happy when you hear about it. Oh my gosh. So that was about the kindness, of what, the the and the importance and the benefit of having the center. So now, when you consider the guru. 
as being the one that, you know, inspired and through whose kindness, uh, you know, so many of these centers exist. I know. <laughs> I know it's hard work, what you're doing. To volunteer at the center, to help pay for the lights to remain on, make a lot of sacrifice. And I know some people only do that. Well, a main reason they do that is they think, and it's true, I'm offering service to my guru. Through doing this, I'm offering service to my guru. It's very good. So anyway, <clears throat> just because of who I am, I'm going to go through a few more points that's in the Lamb Room, but still from the heart. Okay, so we saw that. Kindness of the Guru. Kindness of the Guru in giving instructions, yes. Those instructions then mm, help us traverse the path, help us get a good human rebirth, help us get liberation, enlightenment. Yes. Okay, fine. Good. That's the easiest to see. Well, mm, it's easiest maybe to understand, right? The guru teaches the path to enlightenment. Okay. But then in the Lamarim teachings, it also says the kindness of the guru in giving us material offerings to uh you know attract this uh attract us into his circle so you understand Sometimes, although I'm 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 a logician, sometimes I think uh, when you read stories in Lamrim or when you hear stories from your guru, and you take them very literally, it's it's a good thing to do. So, it was many years ago. I remember in Lamrim talks about how when Milarepa met Marpa, Marpa gave some uh some some beer actually. Or like Chang, they call it in, in Tibet. And Milarepa drank the whole thing. First meeting. What do you think? Good? Yes, it's good. It's good. These little things of the guru, it sets up a dependent origination. So that was actually considered very auspicious. You also know Milarepa, inauspicious, offered an empty copper pot. Which is why Bay and others in the Sok offering, after we empty out the bowls, we don't put an empty bowl on the, the altar like this. Put them upside down. So Milarepa, you know, he was very um, destitute, poor. Didn't have anything to offer the guru. 
Marpa's wife, out of compassion, gave Milarepa a copper pot, big one, not like this, cooking pot. Gave it to Marpa. Now, Marpa saw it was empty, and therefore it's inauspicious. But what he did, he took a, a you know, kind of hammer and like, you know, beat it. Right? This would be auspicious, like sounding of a bell, they say, right? It's like the sound of Dharma. So the uh, the inauspiciousness of having offered the empty bowl, empty pot, was that Mar uh, Milarepa would remain destitute in his life. But since Marpa had the presence of mind to kind of sound the, the pot like a gong, he, Milarepa's lineage and teachings would resound and spread. The auspiciousness of having drank everything in the first meeting with Marpa meant that he would then be able to receive, enjoy all the teachings from Marpa. So, I don't know if you were there, Shanti, but uh, <laughs> when I was a young monk, I, I you see, I remember these, this this story, and a group from Bangalore. We we're gonna meet. We met Lama Zopa Rinpoche in Bodh Gaya, and Rinpoche offered us all tea. And uh, well, this is this is how I, this is what I did. I wrote on a little you know note in my notebook. Drink all of the tea. Don't even leave a drop. And I pass that to everyone in the in the audience. Later, can I admit something? Later, oh, okay, not mentioning any names, but someone else in the group who's senior to me, a little bit made fun of me for doing this. Like, so naive. I don't know. I don't know what it was. They made fun of me, but people like to make fun of me. It's okay. But I think I did the right thing. So yeah. Therefore, when you give things to the guru, You should know this. Fill it up. Okay? In terms of other things, just while I'm on the topic, and then we're gonna we're gonna switch to the chanting names of Manjushri. They say oh in general, very good to offer things to the guru, but don't offer shoes. Why not? You can think of it, right? Shoes. Someone leaving. What is good to offer? Uh, like the sitting carpets. You know those Tibetan carpets? For people to sit, stay, remain. Mm. That's nice. So by extension, <laughs> United Airlines travel certificates, not good. I don't think, right? We have to, we have to use, go beyond, <laughs> right? <clears throat> so anyway, like that. That's why you'll see, by the way, you know, you see in the long life puja offered to his holiness, right? There's a traditional offerings. Yes, you see. Then after the traditional offerings, there's extra offerings. And you'll always see, now you in India, or who've seen in India, you'll now know, or when you tune in on the live stream, 
you'll see they always add a carpet. You notice that? Yes. So now, um, you understand? I think you do. But yeah, now maybe we can open up for questions. So go ahead. This is your your own question or a question that came on on the Zoom. Oh, my question. Your own question. That's even better. I mean, isn't that just symbolic in terms of the the okay, the offering to the guru? What's that? Sorry, go ahead. It's in it just symbolic. Does it really? Um, is there a real significance of it? Like you said. The United Wait, is versus it, carpet. I guess I I don't quite understand the real meaning. So so sorry, I didn't hear the whole thing. Is it just symbolic, mm -hmm. or what? What are my options? But it's if it come from a genuine offering, is it a bad thing? If let's say if I didn't know that I shouldn't have offered shoes and I did. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Fine. You hear that? If you didn't know, and you were sincere, you see your guru just walking around in uh, you know, very tattered, and you offer. Is is that a bad thing? So no, it's not a bad thing. And and by all means, okay. So in, in general, one should think this. You offer everything to the guru, right? And then it's also good, you offer what the guru needs. So if your guru is about to fly to, to India to receive some teachings, okay, you're, you're going fine, good, but buy a return ticket. <laughs> Not just one way. Or no, I'm just I'm just saying. Right, so you 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 should give what is needed. That's very good, and you should give freely and all this. But those stories are there. I've heard them. They make a little bit of sense to me, and. Um, You see, for me, <laughs> I'm also a little bit practical. So, I'm traveling, right? Uh, what am I going to do with the carpet, right? Don't give me a carpet. Even not that I have any students, but in the future, I don't really need a carpet. You know what I mean? What's that? A flying carpet, yes. Like uh, like Aladdin, yes. If you yeah, if you have one of those carpets, although I wonder. Oh, that's that's very deep. We'd be on the debate courtyard. It's a mode of transportation and a carpet. <laughs> the, the, the karma then just kind of balances out. No, I'm joking. So of course, what, what you what you should understand, Bay, there is a story, right? The motivation is most important. So there is a story. Then one person, right? They, they're walking in the rain. 
they see the uh, a clay statue of the Buddha getting rained on. They're worried that the, the, the clay would disintegrate. So they put shoes on the head. Then the rain stops. Someone sees, oh my gosh, there's shoes on the head of a Buddha. Takes the shoes off. Both of them did virtue. Okay? So, uh, don't be too, uh, you know, <laughs> right? Don't get too stressed out about it. Like, for example, you know, Rinpoche showed the aspect of having, di having diabetes, right? But then you think, oh, uh, uh, should I offer something sweet? There's another uh, advice we're, we're given that you should offer those things that are precious to you, that you have attachment, right? In the other inner mandala offering, the object of my attachment. So if you're very attached to chocolate, you give it as a, a symbolic. This is the thing that's most precious to me, right? Then the guru is, uh, you know, showing the aspect of being diabetic. They don't have to eat your chocolate, but they you get the merit of having offered chocolate. And I tell you, remember she was very fond. Those those things that he received, he would give them to his other students, right? No problem. Okay. Any other questions? Do you want to in unmute yourself? Huh? Yes? No? Sorry, then then just uh yeah, whoever has the hand up in the corner, then you can ask your question. I, I can't see your name, so you know who you are. Or you can type it in however you want to do it. Or maybe she just uh, mistakenly put her hand up. Or oh, wait, there's something in the chat. See? That's an old chat. That's anyone, an old chat? Does anyone else want to ask a question? Okay. No problem. So Namgyal, Namgyal, how is that? I spoke from the heart. It's okay. Huh. It's okay. Or or should I should I just go back to Lama next time? Yeah. Namgyo, don't don't be don't be so serious. Sometimes, it's okay. I know I know I know you're you're very shy. I'm doing that so you so the eye appears to you. I'm being very serious. What do you think? No? Namgyal is, uh, yeah. Always having, except not this time, but many times when we meet, he has all these very profound questions on emptiness. This time, this time didn't happen. Maybe he's saving for the car ride home. <laughs> okay. I'm joking. I, I have nothing but respect i'm just playing because we're close all right so if there are no more questions let us then uh fulfill the flyer i will leave the Can chanting I ask a question? Games. Ah. Uh, uh, can you hear me okay 
I can hear you great, Nicole. Okay, okay, thank you. So, Venerable Namjong, uh, this is a small question, but you've talked about the tea before and how you told everyone that they should finish the tea. Did you ever get any like confirmation if that was like, did you ever ask anyone, like, is that correct? Like, should you make sure that you finish? I mean, it's a small detail, but it's a very interesting. I never thought about that. So I was just curious, is that like, have you heard that since that you're supposed to like finish the tea or I don't know? Or could you explain so, a little bit? I mean, I can understand yeah, I can yeah, guess so, that what your so, thinking was when you yeah, said yeah. that, but I'm just curious oh. if you could like expand a little bit more. Um, mm. I'm 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 gonna help you understand. So maybe when your camera was off, you were making uh some uh some some vegan ramen. But I explained my rationale is because in the teaching I had read, when when uh, Marpa offered Milarepa beer. Milarepa drank the whole thing without hesitation, without thinking, oh, you should, oh this is beer. Maybe I have a, a vow not to drink alcohol, but didn't think any of that. Just drank the whole beer. And then it said in the Lamrim that that was very auspicious that uh, Milarepa would be able to receive and enjoy all the teachings from Marpa. In fact, one of the analogies given is like a, a, a container or like a vase fully filling the next vase. By the way, we do this in the water bowl offerings, right? We, we fill the first one and then we pour out all except a little bit into the second one. And then from that one, all but a little bit into the third in this. This is a dependent arising that the lineages that we pass on will go and continue. So one of the analogies given for a, a, a teacher to give all the teachings to the guru is like a vase completely filling another. Okay? So... In fully drinking the 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 beer, Milarepa then had the auspicious connection to receive all the teachings from Milarepa. I'm oh, sorry, from Marpa. Okay, so with that in mind, I told those students, "You drink all the tea." Now, I was so confident in 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 that. I didn't have to go ask, hey, oh, Lama Zobarimshe, I, I advise all the students to drink all the tea. Was that a good thing? No way. No, it was, it was good enough for Milarepa. It's there in the text. I did it. What do you think? Huh? Were you, were you there, by the way? <laughs> you you could have been one in the room. I've seen you in Boat Guy. Were you in the room and you somehow left some tea behind? Because you're like, what is that Nam Jong telling me? Who does he think he is? No, I'm joking. <clears throat> Venerable Nam Jong, can I ask another question? Yes. Well, <laughs> first of all, how how is that answer? That was very good. I'm sorry I missed it originally. <laughs> See, I thought so. <laughs> It was like probably like the two minutes I stepped away. I'm really sorry. I, I yeah. Okay. Uh, my follow up question was: You just mentioned leaving a little bit of the of water when you do like the water bowls and you go from one to the other. Mm. Something about uh, like the lineage lineage of the teachings or something like it has. Mm. To like I'd never heard that. Could you explain a little bit more about that if you don't mind? Okay, so that first full bowl, okay, it's like the, the, the Buddha. The second bowl, 
the, so the, the Buddha then passes on all his teachings to his direct disciple. Okay. That then the disciple passes all the teachings on to the next disciple and to the next and to the next. And so like that, in general, the teachings go on from generation to generation. Okay. So however many you fill, seven, 49, a million, that's setting up a auspicious dependent arising for the teachings to continue generation after generation. Now, why do we leave a little bit in? Because we're putting it on the altar and we don't want to offer an empty bowl. So we leave a little bit in so it's not empty. But the symbolism is that the teachings will pass in the complete form from generation to generation. Thank you. I'm very glad you mentioned that because I I really appreciate knowing that and I wouldn't have ever asked that question if you hadn't mentioned it. So thank you. You would not have ever asked that question. <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> I never did, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> From beginning with samsaric rebirth till now, you have never asked that question. <laughs> and you would have never asked that question in the future. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway. Yeah. Okay. So let us continue. We have gone a little bit over time, but this chanting the names of noble Manjushri is a practice that was recommended by His Holiness the Dalai Lama for the swift return of Lama Zopa Rinpoche. I will also just say that in recent years, when His Holiness the Dalai Lama has been uh, asked about practices to do for the swift return of several Lamas, Kensar Kangua Rinpoche, I don't know if you know, he was a former abbot of Sarah J. Later was in Adelaide, Australia, uh, and was a resident teacher there for many years. So also for his swift return, also for the swift return of uh, <clears throat> Kensar Rinpoche Losan Pelden, who, uh, yeah, was this, the abbot of Sarah J. who gave me uh, Rabjun ordination. Anyway, so it's a very profound practice. And um, it's actually the first uh, text within the Tantra section of the Kangyur, or the words of the Buddha. It is also said that re reciting it gives you the same benefit of reciting uh, all of the Tantras. So anyway, we have a, a translation here. Uh, so let's just um, think again our, our motivation to, for the benefit of all sinning beings especially for uh, us to always be guided by perfectly qualified mind and virtuous friends particularly Lama over Rinpoche and for Rinpoche to manifest again quickly in this world and show the same aspect of benefiting sinning beings in the Dharma Okay, so in, in interest of time, I'm gonna go, you know, a little, little bit. Okay, speed. Okay, so normally, uh, when you do this, it's not like um, reading a children's story. Then Vajradhara, ever glorious, right? But then Vajradhara, ever glorious, supreme Siddhartha, the heart of the name here is, you know, so quite quick. Um. Mouth it, make audible sound, but uh, you can be quick. When the gurus give this as an oral transmission, then sometimes it takes like 12, 15 minutes maybe. Yeah. When we do, it'll probably take close to 30. So let's see. Okay. All right. So now before you recite the text, it's very good to visualize all sinning beings in space around us and think that they are hearing these words from us. Okay? 
Uh, there's also a uh, mantra for multiplying. Tayata om dare dare ben dare soha. You know that one? So seven times. Tayata om dare dare ben dare soha. 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 Chanting the names of Noble Manjushri in Indian language, Ayur Manjushri, Namasanga, Di, in Tibetan Papa, Jamba, Gi, Sen, Yanaba, Java. In English, the chanting names of Noble Manjushri, homage to every youthful Manjushri. Then Vajralar, ever glorious, supreme, subduer of the heart to tame, hero, conquering, triple world, Vajralar, master of all secrets, his wide, eyes wide open like white lotuses, his face is like a lily in full bloom. While shaking his hand repeatedly, uh, Vajra, the highest excellence, accompanied by comes Vajrapanis, with creatures such as fierce of the brows, with features such as fierce of the brows, subduers of hard to tame heroes, appearing with heroic hideous forms, brandishing in their hands mighty Vajras, tips of which admit intense of light, the great benefactors to all living beings, to skill, through insight, and through great compassion, with pleased and happy actors with joy. Their bodies are those of rival deities, protectors who assist the Buddhist deeds, their bodies bound reverentially paid homage to the true awakening one. Protect our blessed one, Tathagata, and joining his two palms respectfully said before the Lord following. O omnish, omnipresent Lord, for my well being, do with due concern for me and for my sake, that I may reach complete awakening upon the basis of illusions, then and for the sake of every living being, sunk deep in the mud of ignorance. Their thoughts are served by various afflictions, so they maintain the uh, obtain the highest fruit. May you, the most supreme awakened one, blessed one, was guru and teacher who knows the great Samaya's reality, aware of wishes and abilities, revealed to us the great name, chanting of the wisdom body of the blessed one, the great Ushnisha, master of all speech. <clears throat> self arisen was nation of the wisdom deity called Manjusha, the name is uh, meaning both profound and vast of grace and wings unmatched. I mean, with goodness at the start, middle, and end, the Buddhas of the ends past, and to be taught by the Buddhas yet to come, and taught not once, but time and time again by all the Buddhas of the present age, which were respectively recited in the illusions that the Tantra, Tantra, most supreme, the by multitudes of mighty Vajrapanis, the joyous guardians of the secret mantras, justice, I shall uphold with firm resolve until I reach my final liberation, so I may become a great protector. The bear of uh, the Buddha's every secret, and this I shall reveal to living beings according to each one's capacity, in order that afflictions may be quelled, so ignorance may be fully dispelled. Uh, with this request, through the Tadaka, the master of the secrets of Vajrapani, his body bowed, his palms po politely joined, then stood before the Lord devotee Lee. And so the blessed one, Lord Shakyamuni, the best of men, the fully winged one, ascending from his mouth, his handsome tongue, a tongue unmatched, and both his breath and length, displaying a gentle smile to living beings, a smile that fills threefold world, where light tames the enemy in the form, as that ends unwanted birth, and all three forms of force, men, Lord, like that of Brahma, completely filling all the trouble of the world. Reply as follows to Lord of Secrets, to Vajrapana, the strongest of the strong, that you, bounding in the supreme compassion and aiming to assist all living beings, are willing and prepared to hear from me this ever quelling, purifying, chanting the chanting of the name so filled with meaning of man, Jewish reason, body, and wisdom. How true the excellent of the hugs and to you, Vajrapani. And so I shall, O Master of Secrets, reveal just that to you most splendidly with my single one and mm, focus, listen to my hugs and respond. And, Vajrapani, O truly excellent blessed one, then the blessed one, Lord Shakyamuni, the surveyed in full the family of the great mantras. <clears throat> <clears throat> the family of Vijas and the mantras, the family of threefold by his, uh, by his nature, the family of and yet beyond the world, family great and brightening the world, the foremost family of Mahamudra, <clears throat> and so the great family great with great Ushnishas. <clears throat> and then about the Lord of <clears throat> Speech, he spoke these verses, which include six kingly mantras, which manifest from non duality, which bear the quality of non arising. And so he is the blessed one. The Buddha, awakened fully born of letter A, he is the letter A, A, the foremost uh, phenom. 
Uh, supreme most civil meaning great arising from the great vital force on broom beyond expression based on words or speech to form most cause of every form of speech the shining for the every kind of language great peace who takes the form of great passion producing blues and everything being great peace who takes the form of great anger great enemy of every mental force and great peace who is by great nature great delusion Delusions vanquish her for deluded minds great peace who is the innocence great fear great adversary to all fearlessness Great fears feast. Who takes the form of great desire? Uh, who vanishes our own form? He is great, carnalus. He is great bliss. He is great happiness. He is great joy with great appearance. Bearing form supreme, great with great complexion, marked by great physique, with great renown, the great man, munificent one. His mandala volume is engraved, the bearer of the mighty sword of wisdom, foremost gold for those for taming great afflictions, possessing great renown, is going great. His brightness great is luster, most supreme, foremost, wise, upholder, great illusion, fulfiller of great illusion, aim and rapture by the great illusions, rapture, the great illusionist, great illusionist, the great illusions, great illusionist, <laughs> foremost, lord of great munificence, supreme, upholder of great discipline, intent, supporter of great tolerance, with valor, rooting, great diligence, samadhi, resting through great meditation, and with bodies flowing. From great wisdom, both great and strength and great and skillful means to bring the ocean filled with vows and knowledge. By nature, great and kind of similar to the foremost mind, which by great compassion, of great insight, of great intelligence, great dexterous one with methods ever great. Commanding power and great miracles with driving force supreme with speed unmatched, most renowned great lord of foremost majesty, most valorous, owing to his great mind, destroying massive mountain of becoming. Unyielding, holding, a uh, strong, a uh, massive, uh, Vajra, great, terrifying Lord, great, Kuran, provoking fear, being great and daunting creatures, protector, greatest of all Vidyas, uh, Guru, as greatest of all mantras, traversing well the Mahana's path, himself the Mahana's foremost way. He is my Ha, Vado, Chandra, Buddha, great sage, observing great intensive science, rising from the great mantra way. He, he is at heart the great mantra way comes to ten paramitas, having ten paramitas of home in whom the ten paramitas appear, for whom ten paramitas are means, protector, reigning over the ten grounds, residing steadily on all ten grounds, may appear in nature by the tenfold knowledge, maintaining purity through tenfold knowledge with tenfold forms, intent on tenfold content, with tenfold strength pervasive, lotus sages, achieving every aim for every being. And thou with tenfold mastery supreme begin as comple complexity devoid by nature, pure reality and essence, unwavering and speaker of truth with uh, speech and actions perfectly aligned. What is your love? The non to no truth, non to top realities, no most of the people with silence is wild. Lions roar and silly fear in dear like misled seekers with. Journeys fruitful, traveling everywhere, swift as star, not all the colors of victors, their form, shrine, and lord, universal king with four verses, great uh, assembly head, instructor for assemblies, assembly lord, assembly chief, the ruler, most influential, bearing precious burdens, not other bound, his way, the greatest way, lord of speech, with ma master of expression, most skillful in words, adept with language, truthful, with balanced words, truth, teacher of truth, providing teachers on the fourfold truth, not coming back, not. Uh, turning round, rhino, leader, practice of Buddhas. Uh, gone forth by, going forth in different ways, same cause of all great elements, are had bhikshu, defilements, exhausted, devoid of passion, master of the senses, arrived at comfort, met with security, for heat, <laughs> having cooled down, is free from stains, equipped in full with knowledge, and is based us who got the best known of the world, not thinking me, not clinging, clinging onto mine, establishing the system of true truths. Upon the edge of cyclic life's far shore, with these comments resting on the bank, emerging from the untainted lone awareness with soul like ever inside, ever penetrating the sun. Dharma King, noble Dharma, supreme eliminator of the world, Dharma Lord, sovereign of Dharma, teacher of the path to excellence, accomplishing all goals, filling aims, completely free from wants of any kind, be of thought, a non depleting source, Dharma source, but supreme beyond decay, enriched by merit, merit gathering, unique, great wisdom, 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 rich. Aware of what exists and what does not, but uh, gathering, twofold gathering, internal yoga, and king of everywhere, uh, the object of mind and of concentration. Ah, uh, master of intelligent reflection, for by oneself, one alone is experienced and movable along the beginning, holder of three enlightened bodies, but the Buddha, formed of five omnipresent, uh, five embodiments, omnipresent, made of five wisdoms, died them, five waking ones with all five eyes, maintaining non attachment. 
the great progenitor of all the Buddhas, Buddhas are the imminent foremost son arising from the world, true inside source is Dharma source, is just an ending, comprised of Vajra, holy, dense, and firm, supreme. The newborn is our ruler of the world, emerging from the sky, the suffer is mass blaze of knowledge and of insight, illuminating, beacon of great light. Now, wisdom shining blindly, a life for our beings, a lantern unto the world with energy supreme, most radiant, Vita King, the greatest mantra, Lord, mantra King, achieving no way, who's the great of Shinisha. Marvelous Ushinisha, Lord of Space, revealer of all things, best in body, and every Buddha, the eyes, with eyes, enjoy the everything, being creator, manifesting varied forms, great sages, being praised, doing worship, mantra, and on board to the Shiva family. Upholding much of the foremost pledge, great bearer of Shibu Jam, who teaches all th the three peerless vehicles with snare unfailing, most victorious, victorious. Snatcher of every great Vaj, snare, Vaj hook, snare of excellence, called Vajabara, he's Turvik, six faced king of anger, hideous, six eyes, six arms, ever powerful, bearing his terrible fangs, skeleton, hala hala, hundred faces proud, the Amakilla room, laying obstacles, instilling fear of Vaj impetus. Vajra, hearted, famous for his Vajra, belly large, Vajra of illusion, Vajra born, sovereign of all the Vajra, akin to spaces, core comprised of Vajra, unmoving, he audio with the single dreadlock, his clothes, and of his raw eyes, of more smooth, with the river, on the grass, ha ha, and moving streams, he he, instilling fervent fear, his lava, squishing life, booming life, he is the Vajra, life, mighty how, he is the normal self of Vajra, self of Vajra, sovereign lord, uh, highest bliss. Vajra Raffleness, highest joy in intoning whom's of Vajra, whom caught up with Vajra arrows serving as his weapon. His sword comprised of Vajra slashing all, upholding every Vajra, Vajra beating with just single Vajra, ending strife with eyes like a Vajra fire, truly dreadful, with head like a Vajra seat abla set ablaze. Immersion of the Vajra, great immersion with eyes like Vajra, Vajra uh, eyes a hundredfold, with Vajra hairs that spread about his body. Unique figure marked by Vajra hairs with nails advancing Vajra to the tip of the skin that sound like a Vajra core. Spending master down in Vajra gardens, adorned with Vajra fashion ornaments with booming voices, laughter crying, ha! Six silver producing Vajra rumbles, great manjagosha sound supremely loud. A roar unique on the threefold world of voice that reaches every bound of space, preeminent among all voice and dub. He is a being who fully realized truth, reality, speak, selfishness, supreme in the propagating emptiness, unspoken teaching, both deep and vast, the Dharma College, a meeting, piercing sound, Dharma Kong, with lasting resonance, arriving at unbound liberation. He is Dharma drum in all directions of that form, has handsome forms, supreme, replete with forms, diverse, comprised of mind, with splendor, shining through his every form, with all reflections under control, invisible, with now and as, Lord, supreme, Lord, Supreme Lord, rules the three, four world, biding on no rules, lofty path, great source of flourishing, down crown, with youth, or form unique unto the world's uh, elder, senior father of all beings, adorned with 32 of spiritual marks, most beautiful, most handsome in all worlds, teacher teaching, mundane, good, and knowledge, teacher to all beings, most confident in the world's most trusted God, protector, uh, savior, the uh, the refuge and surpassing guardian with rich and drums filling all the space, the ocean, knowledge ocean of omniscient beings while uh, smashing through the shell of ignorance and breaking through the cage of cyclic life. The thorough queller of intense affliction, rhyming some stars opposite shore, his uh, crown, the crown of wisdom, concentration, the woman, and comprising perfect Buddhas, the soothe of pain of threefold pain, and the true ending free. Arriving at threefold liberation, uh, completely free of every obscuration, having achieved a quality sky like beyond the stains of every last affliction, aware of timelessness in all three times, most eminent among all sinning beings, the crown amongst those crowned with noble virtues, completely free from every kind of substrate. Established from the on the path of space, but in which fulfilling jewel in his hand, best of all his precious on the on the present, great wish filling tree, most plentiful, the greatest of all great precious vases. Fulfilling the aims of living beings, the doer and ally, the most beloved to all creatures, aware of good and bad, aware of times I'm present, or of pleasures of pleasure, and pleasures conscious of occasions, awake to very uh, aptitudes and being expertise and threefold liberation with virtues, knowing virtues, knowing dharma, auspicious, sort of auspiciousness of all auspicious things, most auspicious, great splendor, glory, good, most prosperous, great assurance, formal celebration, great joyful joyousness. The highest form of pleasure, abundance, reverence, action, venerable, great happiness, low, noble Lord of Splendor, great, greatest grantor of wishes, uh, all wishes wished for. 
The highest source of refuge, right for granting the fears of men who put in danger, they may endanger in all its forms, tuft the hair, plumes, the luscious hair, man of hair, and man of locks, and cord tied with five faces, five hair ties, with high head, well adorned, his head adorned with five, garlands of five strands. Upholding great observance, his head shaved in the foremost of observances, chaste student with great austerities, perfected fully, he is greatest banner, bather, or Gautama, Brahman, Brahma, nor Brahman, or arrived at. In full, that Brahman Nirvana, awakening, experiences liberation, release, complete tranquility, quiescence, nirvana, peacefulness, tranquility, potion, graceful entry into nirvana, culmination, and pain, pleasure, the state door, and passion free from substrates beyond defeat, unmanifest, unmatched, not making manifest appearance free, pervasive, timeless, fully omnipresent, minute, beyond the foundment, seed free, unstained, devoid, passion, passionless, controlling, humorous, free of every illness. By nature, most awakened, fully awake. On this, knowing everything is supreme beyond reality, is conscious, pristine awareness, bearing non dual form, beyond conservation, every free acting as Buddhas do in every age. The Buddha, endless and beginning as the Buddha, at the start of devoid of sequence with wisdom, his only eye, and saying, Tadagata with wisdom as the body, sovereign of all language, great debater, king of discourse, best of orators, the best, uh, greatest of communicators, unsayable line of speech, with a universal vision, true to life, five bottoms, have some to behold, and the most radiant, great luster. With uh, shining rays in and providing light, best and foremost, all great physicians, unequaled in removing forms of pain, a tree providing medicine for all, a foe opposing every malady. Malady. <laughs> <laughs> the loving climbing jewel of all three was cluster stars, most glorious end of space in all its ten directions, hosting high. Uh, uh, the Dharma's victory flag, the sharing one large umbrella of the world with love and kindness is his mandala, celebrate Lord Lotus of the Dance, pervasive with his precious parasol, the blazing enemy of all the Buddhas, with bodies fully shared by all the Buddhas, highest union form with all the Buddhas, teachings, single teaching taught by all the Buddhas, most glorious Vajra, Ratna's blessing, highest sovereign Lord of Ratna, Sarva Ratna, the supreme King Supreme of Sarva Lokshvara. The Lord on high of uh, Sarva Vajadara, quintessential mind of Sarva Buddha, residing in the mind of every Buddha, uh, greatest body born of every Buddha, love, vision, resonating, uh, Buddha, scorching brightness of Vajra sun, stainless luster from Vajra moon, great passion of the passion less than others with multicolored uh, rays that blaze, blaze brightly for perfect Buddha's perfect Vajra posture, retaining. For all beings, the Buddha, Dharma, Lord is Buddha, celebrates on uh, knowledge, treasure from omniscient. <laughs> Sovereign King, co controlling all illusions, foremost master of Buddha spells, we have called Vajra Tikshana, sword, supremely mighty, completely pure, high syllable, top pains, remedy, Mayana, with Vajra. Dharma as my weapon, with Vajra, Devon, Rana, Gina, Jig, Vajra, Thala, aware of how things are. Perfecting all perfections perfectly adorned by all the grounds of voice of self and pure phenomena with luster that has been laid onto knowledge. With great endeavors as illusory nets, uh, foremost master, willing every tantra and thou with full with every vajra posture, completely furnished with all wisdom bodies, completely good and like supreme embryo of earth sustaining beings, great embryo from which all Buddhists uh, form. With emanation circles, most diverse, highest nature of all entities, uh, supportive nature of all things, with goals for all the dharmas and arisen, supportive of nature of all dharmas, with uh, full uh, awareness of all phenomena, abundance and wisest sage, with vivid realization of all dharmas, Jesus sage, greatest intellect, vanquish of hosts of evil spirits, unwavering, completely pure in nature, grasping wakefulness of perfect Buddhists, realization of all Buddhas. Uh, the re direct realization of all Buddhists sees the flame of wisdom, luminous, the great filler of desired aims, the purifier of all evil states, the greatest of all living beings, protector of the inner celebrity of all creatures, unrivaled night in battle with afflictions, uh, hum humiliating ignorance, is full of celebrating mind of amorousness, that with forms heroic and impulsive dancer, moving to and fro in his hundreds of lengthy arms while setting down to his stride, dancers spreading through the whole space and filling with hundred uh, shinimats, hundred arms, Stood tall atop the uh, surface of the earth, the soul of just one foot pervading all. Stood tall atop the summit of the world, the uh, nail of his big toe suppressing all. Whose aim is one, whose aim is non-dual dharma, whose aim is ultimate beyond instruction, whose mind consists in groups of consciousness with varied objects, forms, and cognizance, amused with every object of existence and mind, of passion, loving, emptiness, transcending worldly passion, and the like with great enjoyment for the threefold world, with fair complexion, white like pristine clouds, with radiance like beams from autumn moons with luster rivaling morning sun with nails emitting light of crimson red with 
whose handsome crown has sterling of sapphires, whose hair has tips of sapphire deep blue, with glory from the light of his great jewel, adorned with the emanations of the Buddha's shaker of a hundred uh, worldly realms, his strength, four miraculous powers, uh, with uh, reality with mindfulness uh, supreme, samadhi, king of four mindfulnesses. Um, infused with safe from bloom on Bodhi's branches and ocean of Tathagata's virtue with the ocean with knowledge of the full path, true way of knowledge of the path of perfect Buddha's great attachment of the beings, attachment free, comparable to space. With when springing up in every creature's mind, he is for every being swift as mind, aware of aptitudes of being while captivating every creature's mind with insight into again issues himself with fully pure five aggregates top peak of every going forth most skilled in going forth in every way savage on all paths going forth teacher of all forms of going forth uprooting all becoming with 12 links endowed with purity of all 12 forms is form the way of four noble truth fourfold noble truth realization a full knowledge while with meaning of the truth 12 four forms aware of such as the 16 forms which we were getting 20 forms awakened fully knowing all supreme especially on the sense of some 10 million Embodiment of em emanating Buddha's final realization of all moments. Who knows each moment of objects for all mine? Manifesting physical sake of beings with my means derived from various vehicles gone forth by way of three vehicles, remaining single vehicles, fruit with uh, purified figure fear, spheres at heart, annihilating every karmic sphere. Arrived at the top dry land from flowing ocean, emerged from the yoga's perilous dark world, released from general minor and complete afflictions and their latent tendencies with insight, means, and foremost empathy, achieving fruit volumes for living beings, binding object free through all perceptions with consciousness as object with cessation with every being, the object of his mind with knowledge as the mind of all Buddhas, residing in the mind of every being, having become their mind's equality and satisfying the meaning, the mind of every being, he is for every being. Great and enjoy confusion free regarding points of doctrine, completely free from error in all its forms. He is thinking free from doubt. His object threefold, his object, all three properties by nature throughout three times the content of five scandals, discerning each and every moment, awakening in but a single moment, his basic nature, equal to all Buddhas with body, bodiless, the best of bodies, with realization of the peak of bodies, displaying his form in every possible way. He's the greatest son, precious gem. With all the perfect Buddhas, uh, what all the perfect Buddhas are to know, the Buddhas of Unspass Awakening, the Buddha symbols, yet born of mantra, arising from the great mantras, threefold family, five to the meanings of all mantras, greatest bindu, void of syllables, five great syllables, the empty, great empty one, hundred syllables, devoid of bindu, endowed with every form, yet free from form, supporting half of half, sixteen bindus, transcending every group and void of members, sustaining Diana's for the final peak, aware of Diana's, each and every aspect with knowledge. Of samadhi's types and families, best of bodies, bodies of samadhi, Sama king of all enjoyment, bodies, best bodies, emanation, body, air, the emanations of the Buddha's varied emanations everywhere, but while benefiting all, however needed. Sovereign lord, uh, sovereign of the gods, god, gods, asura, lord, uh, ruler of immortals, king of deities, gods, guru, the highest lord of pramathas, uh, paramata, pramata. A emerge from cyclic life's imposing force, the single teacher guru of all beings in every world. Well known world in all directions, an eminent besor of Dharma, concealed by armor made of loving kindness, was well shielded by the shield of empathy, with wisdom sword in hand, with bow and arrow, concluding war with ignorance and clashes. Mars enemy and tamer hero, eliminating threats from all four Mars, defeating the armies of Lamar, guided by living beings, perfect brother, deserving homage, worthy of respect, deserving reverence, always honorable, deserving worship, worthy of the highest school of ever, reversing. All three worlds and just one try to step uh, extending past the bounds of space with knowledge of three well versed and pure with sixfold higher knowledge and recall. Bodhisattva Mahasava with power great transcending worldly life perfected by his excellent of insight now unified with uh, insight's highest nature. The whole aware of self, aware of others, uh, for fit for all he's the best of men, surpassing all to which he is compared supreme most. Lord of uh, knowing and what's known, foremost master and parting Dharma, who shows the meaning of fourfold seal, the most revered amongst living all living beings and daily going forth in all three paths with glory, purified by ultimate nature, most fortunate within three worlds, celebrated source of all endowments. Supreme among the glorious men, Jushri, homage to you, boon, branter, best advisors, summon of existence, homage to you, homage to you, whose source is emptiness, homage. Uh, O Buddha's awakening, homage to you. O passionate Buddha's homage to you. Desire Buddha's, I pay homage to you. O love every Buddha. 
همش یو جو اوال بود از پی همش یو اسمال اوال بود همش یو مف اوال بود از پی همش یو اوس پیچ اوال بود همش یو دا هارد اوال بود بود از پی همش یو ریزن فروم نان بینگ همش یو همش یو ریزن فروم دا بود از ریزن فروم دا سکای همش یو همش یو بورن اف ترستین پرستین ویزم اون این اولوژن همش یو همش یو بود از سپکتکل همش یو دا ایرین اف آل آل بادی ویزم همش یو Om Savada Dhamma Bhava Sabhava Vishuddha Vajra Aam A Prakati Parashuddha Savadama Ya Uta Savata Takata Jana Kaya Majushri Parashuddha Tam Upada Yeti Aam Savata Takata Shridayam Hara Hara Om Unhushri Bhagavan Jana Murti Vagishara Mahavacha Sarva Dhamma Gaganamala Subarashuddha Dhamma Dhatu Jana Garba A Then Vajradara, ever glorious, most pleased, and says she satisfied with fold palms, prostrate, Buddha, noble guard, and then blessed Lord Tathagata, and with a host of other Vajrapanis of varied forms, lords of Guyakas, uh, the blind protectors, noble wrath kings, he then exclaimed with this eff this ever effervescent praise. Protector of your choice, how excellent. How excellent what you have clearly taught. Through you, our lofty aim has been achieved, which leads to true and full awakening, and so the aims of helpless, mundane beings who seek the fruits of perfect liberation. Just this taught is the mark. Yeah, Jala is the noble path of these excellence with largest, vast, and profundity, with meaning great, achieving beings' aims. This comprises every Buddhist sphere. Just this is taught by all awakened ones. This concludes the supreme chanting of the names of the Blessed One, Manjushri, Wisdom, Deity, It was extracted from the Noble Net of Illusion of Maha Yoga Tantra in 16,000 parts from his chapter on the Net of Samadhi. It was spoken by the Blessed One, Shakyamuni, the Tathagata. Okay. Uh, hmm. So there is another text that um, actually I translated some years ago, and I don't have it on my iPad, but look for it. It's the innermost essence of the Manjushri Tantra. So we don't have time now, but some advertising, okay? So Rinpoche, we have time? Yeah. One time I had the... Extreme good fortune. So I was in Delhi. And I was going to Dharmasala. And um, Nurbishe was there. He flew in. I met him close to the, the airport. And then when he heard I was going to Dharmasala, he's like, you want to ride? <laughs> and so I said, yes. Nicole, I, I took the ride the whole way. I didn't say let me off at, uh, you know, Lower Dharamsala or anything. I went the whole way. And on the way, you know, we stop a couple times for tea, for meals. And, uh, you know, Delhi to Dharamsala, it's a long drive. Maybe 12 hours. Yeah. So then stopping twice, it's going to be like more than that, right? Yet after the meal, Rinpoche pulls out a text, right? We're, we're, we're busy. We're, we're, you know, we're going to get there at like three in the morning. Yet Rinpoche pulls out a text. You know what text he pulls out? This one. jean paul And after the text, after finishing, he recites this other text. Innermost essence of the Manjushri Tantra. Uh -huh. And so the advice is, it says, reciting that one, you get the same benefit. And it's only this long. You get the same benefit as reciting the whole uh, names of Manjushri. But... 
what he told uh, one of my colleagues. He said, you recite the full one and then you recite it three more times, the, the innermost essence. Don't just do the innermost essence. Nonetheless, you can do what you like. So later, uh, you know, actually, it was at that time I had this thought. Mm. Rinpoche mentioned how Lama Tsongkhapa was at the dinner. He said, Lama Tsongkhapa recited that text every day. Names of Manjushri. He also recited the Vajrakara Sutra every day. Shortly thereafter. So, you know, when you hear these things too, right? This is in your notebook. Something a little bit surprising. You know, I never heard that before. I thought, oh, remember she is saying to me, right? It wasn't a big teaching. It was like at a dinner. Hey. I'm so glad I do this every day. So then you think, well, why? Why is Rinpoche saying this to me? So I had the thought, okay, this is significant. I thought, oh, it wouldn't be good for me to, to it'd be good for me to recite every day. But I made a, min a little bit of a mistake, right? When you receive uh, this kind of advice from the guru, you should do it right away, Right? If you can. But then the mind thinks, oh, I can't. I have no time. Blah, blah, blah. But fortunately, a little bit after that, at the uh, Lababduchen, which you know is the um, descent from heaven. It's one of the, the multiplying special days in the Buddhist calendar. I said, all right, I'm doing it. So I started. Uh, then a year goes by. And I, uh, you know, we said this yesterday with the Guru Puja, right? What's the best offering to the Guru? Practice. So I, I it's Lababduchin. I see my guru. And I tell him, Rinpoche, Rinpoche, I have an offering. I tell him, I've uh, I've been reciting this every day. And he's a manjushri. He's very, very happy. And you know what he says to me? He's laughing in, you know, in the Rinpoche way. And he says, if you if you knew, if you knew about the benefits of resetting it, you would fall down. Okay, means, this is my interpretation, it'd be so unbelievable that you would like faint, you know? So anyway, that one, the the uh, innermost essence of the, man, the the tantra, I translated, and that's now um, published. And then, uh, you know, I try to keep a low profile. But when this was um, given as a practice for Rinpoche's swift return, I got in touch with. With uh, IMI, I'm like, hey, you should also put this out there because I don't think many people know about this this practice of the innermost essence. Although he told some, now I'm telling you, okay? So with that, let's end our session. Oh, <laughs>
No, oh, then we can do, we can do, we can do. Okay. We, we, we get the same benefit, okay? A few more. Two more minutes. I know, I know you guys. Okay. Very good, Bay. I'm, 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 I'm impressed. <laughs> okay. In what essence of the Arya Manjushri Tantra in the language of India, Arya Manjushri Tantra Chita, in the language of the Papa Jampe Gyugi Yangning, in the English language, in most essence of the Arya Manjushri Tantra, Apasha to the Manjushri, in this way, the, to the Bhagavan Buddha, wisdom, body, self, arisen, stainless soul, light of wisdom, brilliant light of wisdom, Arapasana Te Nama. Hmm. How much you the wisdom body itself? This is uh thus it was explained by all the complete Buddhas a couple times. I and then when you do, uh that's okay. Uh, the perfect expression of the ultimate names of the Bhagavan, the wisdom being Manjushri as proclaimed by the Tathagata Shakyamuni is complete. Okay, that's it. But but go back up or you're gonna do it three times? Yeah, uh -huh. I appreciate it. And then when you do it the second, third time, just I hear. I appreciate to do for Manjushri in this way. To the Bhagavan Buddha, the wisdom body, self of wisdom, the same the soul, I have wisdom, brilliant light of wisdom, out of us in it. How much do you wisdom by itself? Thus, it was explained by the com all the complete Buddhas. Perfect expression of the ultimate names of the Bhagavan wisdom being Manjushri is proclaimed by the Tathagata Shakyamuni is complete. I appreciate the beautiful Manjushri. And so, to the Bhagavan Buddha, the wisdom by itself, arisen, saying the soul, I have wisdom, brilliant light of wisdom, Arapasanat. Yatenama. How much you do wisdom body itself? Thus explained by all the complete Buddhas, the perfect expression of ultimate names of the Bhagavan. Wisdom being mentioned as proclaimed by the Tathagata Shakyamuni is complete. Okay. Thank you. Okay, I know you guys have been so patient, so thank you. Uh, but if you knew the benefits, you would fall down. So, if you have you recited that before? No. Okay. If if okay, but the regular one. Okay. If you haven't recited that text before, I'm gonna I'm gonna make a a big big statement. But I'm, I believe it. The mere fact that you. Uh, recited that text for the first time. Your whole existence in samsara until your enlightenment is going on a different direction now. Like this, you're gonna you're gonna realize emptiness. You know, you know how we were saying. Okay, I'm 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 going out on a limb, but I'll I'll, I'll debate this. I'll I'll. I'll hold this position. How Rinpoche was saying, the one person, they come to the center, they abandon killing one tick and their life goes like so much better. Can you imagine? We we can ask. Nicole, we can ask. Okay. We say, we had the center open and because the center had this teaching today, this person recited the noble, uh, you know, names of Manjushri for the first time in their life. Wow. Wow. If you like later, you know, ever get clairvoyance, you can remember past and future lives, many, many, many lives. You'll remember this time. And you'll be like, yes, that was a really good way to spend my Friday night. Really? No, it's so true. I mean, anyway, I we're 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 out of time. But you know, these these times are very, very, very rare in the in the, the course of our beginning with samsaric existence that uh, any chance we get to practice and here okay 
this, by the way, His Holiness the Dalai Lama gave this as advice. So if you're a student of His Holiness, you're now following the advice of your guru. <clears throat> Now, actually, Bay, you're a little bit, um, you're reminding me. So this is, this is, a, this is a, a confession I have to make. How do we find out about the benefits? So at that time, when I told Rinpoche, there's a text on the benefits. And he said, it'd be very good if you translate that text. Now, I'm, here's my confession. You can you can do a Google search. You won't find that translation. Not for me. I've been a little bit delinquent. It's something I felt really bad about, actually. Now, I will say, later, when I saw Rinpoche, I said, Rinpoche, you, you gave me that text to translate. I'm sorry, I haven't done it yet. And he was very, very accommodating saying, don't worry when you have time, when you have time. So, you know, I feel kind of okay. But this whole thing, you know, I don't have time. It's really, it's a really poisonous mind. Because I'll, I'll, be, I'll be honest, you know, I, I, I'm on vacation. I was in Hawaii for five weeks. I had time. I had time to go hiking. I had time to go to the beach. I had time to go snorkeling. Whatever, right? Oh, but hey, follow your guru's advice. Ah, oh, no time, no time. So busy. Right? What do you think? What's going on there? You know, this year I didn't even I didn't even ask my uh, my astrologer friend. So now I'm not. <laughs> now now I've even degenerated from that. So, but at least I came here tonight. Okay. So with that, let's dedicate the merit. In all my lives, due to this merit, in all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the splendor of Dharma by completing all the qualities of the stages and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Rajadara. We also dedicate all our merit for the swift return of Lama Zopa Rinpoche, and may we and all other sinning beings always be guided by such perfect gurus in all our future lives, in, and may we only do what's most pleasing to their holy minds, and in that way fulfill all their holy wishes instantly. We also dedicate for uh, the long lives of the spiritual friends who still exist in the world, particularly His Holiness Dalai Lama. May they have long and stable lives, and may all of their activities increase, and all their holy wishes be immediately fulfilled. We also dedicate for the uh, flourishing of the Holy Dharma, and uh, for the mind of Bodhicitta to arise in our hearts and in the hearts of all sinning beings without any seconds of delay. And those who have already generated in the mind of Bodhicitta may never decline, but always increase. And thus... Uh, due to all this merit, may we quickly attain the state of Rajadhara and lead all the ascending beings to that enlightened state. Okay. Sorry. A little bit quick uh, in the dedication, but it's okay. So thank you for uh, coming. And uh, yeah. See you next time. I don't know when that will be. I don't know. It's like that, right? So I fly to Nepal on Monday. And, uh, you know, Rinpoche's uh, one-year kind of uh, commemoration is on the 13th. So I'll be there for some, some of those festivities. And, uh, yeah. Who knows? So... Thank you. And, uh, you know, 
do your best. Be kind to each other. And uh, I'll see you at some point, I hope. Thank you. Thank you. Bueno, bueno, chao.